The Air Force's AWACS radar planes are relics. Congress needs to speed production of their replacement. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And I am I boot. If you want more videos subscribe my YouTube channel Grin. The U.S. Air Force's fleet of E-3 Airborne Warning and Control System, AWACS, radar planes is on its last legs. The head of Air Combat Command says the whole fleet is, in hospice care, meaning its demise is imminent. AWACS has played a pivotal role in monitoring airspace and managing military operations since it joined the force in 1977. But production ceased in 1992, and the Boeing BA-1.1% 707 jetliner on which it is based was retired by airlines decades ago. The problem isn't just that using a four-engine aircraft when more efficient twinjets are available wastes a lot of money on fuel. Finding spare parts for an airframe designed at the dawn of the jet age is increasingly difficult. Airmen must scrounge in the boneyard for items no longer in production. But while the plane has aged out, the mission of airborne surveillance and battle management has never been more important. As the focus of U.S. strategy shifts to the Pacific, the joint force must be able to surveil the sky over millions of square miles of ocean and adjoining land masses. That requires airborne radars with greater range and precision. The Air Force has a solution. It is the E-7 Wedgetail, a radar plane based on the Boeing 737, the world's most popular twin jet, that was first developed for Australia and is now operated by several allies. Boeing contributes to my think tank. The service should have started buying Wedgetail long ago, before the mission-capable rate of the AWACS fleet collapsed. But we are where we are. Last year it announced the beginning of that process, stating that the E-7 is the only available option that can be fielded in an acceptable time frame. The Air Force certainly is correct about the absence of suitable alternatives, but what constitutes an acceptable time frame is open to debate. It takes four years to complete each E-7 aircraft, two years to build the aircraft at Boeing, and another two years to modify it into a radar plane and that puts arrival of the first two E-7s in the fleet beyond the date when some observers think Beijing might make a move on Taiwan. Hopefully, what's left of the AWACS fleet can cover the region until E-7s arrive, but with the most decrepit planes in the current fleet already moving to the boneyard, how long the rest of the fleet can remain operational is uncertain. Moreover, Wedgetail is intrinsically more capable than the aged AWACS planes able to surveil larger areas and also collect electronic intelligence. This will be especially important in and around China until the Air Force's next-generation air dominance fighter becomes available in the 2030s. It doesn't take much reflection to see what needs to be done. Congress should accelerate production of the E-7 to 4 planes per year, starting in 2024, so that there are half a dozen aircraft in the force by 2028. Thanks for watching like this video and subscribe my YouTube channel.